All right, so this one's probably going to be pretty short here. But uh, I just wanted to highlight this this thing that is mentioned uh, <laughs> because because of the importance. There's there's many things uh, in the ethers right now running around and. Uh, Are right there for for you to grab upon, to pull in, to call in, and to give awareness to. The choice, and this is one of the main things that I emphasize: is your power of choice. Choosing to create, recognizing what you are doing first and foremost, and then choosing from a place of knowingness, because you are always choosing, but the problem is that we, we have been indoctrinated and uh, tricked into thinking that we are not actually doing the thing that is creating, that is manifesting. So part of this awakening is a dissolving of these illusions and recognizing what is happening within the moment, what you, what you are doing in every moment, uh, with or without thought, just, just by being, just by having a heartbeat and an intent. Uh, and you can go into the stillness even and not necessarily, <laughs> necessarily have a focal point upon an, uh, an intent. But just by having a heartbeat, every beat, and you can, you can even take it a step further and match your breath with your heartbeat. And really dive down into the stillness. Every heartbeat that you have, every micro breath that you have with the heartbeat, that is a pulse and that is going out into the all and being reflected back. So part of this process of this work, the great work, is the recognition of what we are projecting out, what we, what is being reflected back, how we are integrating, how we are choosing to integrate, to allow certain things to refine our experiences into clearer and clearer and purer aspects of what is truly real and alive and true. What fe not only what feels the best, but what feels alive. We, this is a, uh, a dissect, a detangling, a disenchanting of the enchantment that has been pulled over the eyes of the of people that don't really know any better because they haven't been taught what is real for the most part so yeah this is going to get into uh, a perfect segue into what I want to talk about uh, which is uh, the images that ha that are changing, that have to change, that must change, in order for humanity as a whole to to really uh, 
really have a huge shift happen. And I mean, you you can see the <laughs> the the tendrils and the roots. And then things spring forth from those roots that are uh, not necessarily super clear or super pure way showers, but they are there for a reason. They are there for stepping stones to help people wake up little by little. Dissolve layer by layer their belief structures to start to really question and really dive down inside and ask them really like fundamental, most important questions and then release that and just experience. To tap back into the experience of Gnosis. That's why we out here. To remind you of what is within you and within us all. So I want to share this real quick because uh, this is beautiful synchronicity, of course. Triple goddesses of love. Isn't that a beautiful thing? Very humorous and glorious. So I want to play this, and then and then I may skip around, and then I uh, have a a card that I pulled, as per usual. And uh, this was beautiful because it's uh, something an animal that I have been seeing uh, frequently, and it has been with me for a very long time. So yeah. Here we go. Empower yourself. And then use everything as a tool outside. You see, I see people on their path, they're angry, going against, you know, the, 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 the system, okay? The planets, going against a bunch of things outside themselves. And, you know, in actuality, if you really want to look at this very, 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 very easily, this is what he said. And I'm like, fuck, yeah, absolutely. Before I play that, he's talking about he he attended one of uh, Brother Panic's, uh, I don't know what it was, uh, seminar type of thing, and so he talks about his his experience with that, and that's beautiful. Like this this video and recollection and the understandings. This is uh, this is clarity one hundred and one. Uh, realizing where you're at, what you're doing, realizing the outer projection, what you're learning, what you're capable of understanding, what it takes to even get on the level to start to understand certain things. And this is just a process. Well, a lot of times in life, we are presented with things and it doesn't really speak to us. And that's because of where we're at currently. But then later on in life, we, we you know get more experiences, we get more uh, awareness, and then that same thing that didn't speak to us before, now all of a sudden, magically, is full of life and meaning. Why is that? Hmm. Allow that to be a reflection of uh, just simply going out in nature. Continuously going out in nature and melding your inner and outer natures, realizing the the 
the design, the perfection of it. And the more and more inner work you do, the clearer and clearer this message and signal becomes of what it's all about. Just how perfect it is. Just how pure it is. Whenever we can get clear, we can clear the channels. So, this is why we fast. This is why we take in of the Orin. This is why we do deep level cleansing and healing and feeling into the inner realms. He said there's three things that are controlling the masses. Symbolism, repetition, and trauma. Symbolism, repetition, and trauma. That's it. So, <laughs> and that's why I wanted to make this and remind of the power that you have. With your imagery, with your words, with your intent, with your feelings. Those three things, they are there and they are utilized by the indoctrination system. The, the, the people that, that brought this about. How to ingrain and, and train the masses, just the people, everyone, that they can touch with this sickness, this dis-ease of uh, forgetfulness and learning a lie, believing, belie-ving something that, that doesn't feel right. And if you can feel, if you can still feel truth and integrity and love if you've ever taken the history class then you know what you felt there you know what happened and then you see all these other people um, and they may be um, certain levels of you know awakened to certain things but then they hold on to certain aspects of history and things that they were taught and they refuse to uh, let those things go. And uh, I've come into contact with uh, several people lately that's like uh, I've connected with, they, they vibe certain things and then they just, they, they will not let go of, of uh, certain ideologies that they have been taught to believe in. And I know they fucking feel what I feel. And it triggers them. And, uh, in time, they will understand what is occurring within them. With, with me reflecting. They, uh, the integration happening with feeling what I am giving off which is that is disgusting and, and I don't 
necessarily go out of my way unless it's being projected hardcore and then I I will put my foot down and be like if you want to stay asleep then that's fine that's your choice but if you're going to project that onto others then that's not going to happen in my whereabouts If you're offering it up, then that's one thing. If you're preaching it, then that's another thing. So this is what's dissolving here, people, is the uh, the illusion from on high, the, 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 from, from way up in the tower. Uh, the, the pieces are falling. So it's up to you how, how to choose, how to navigate this, how to navigate the people that are uh, waking up, but then the people that also want to hang on to the banks and the obstacles and not flow with this river of gnosis. They, they have too much fear and too much trauma to release into truth. You're going against all this outside of you, knowing that those three simple things you could just use to your advantage. You know they're being used against you, but how come you don't use those things to your advantage? Because first of all, ask yourself, what are you? What are you? See, there's people who got to break layers, first of all. Because aside from, you know, the, the, you, you come out and say, I'm a police officer, I'm a doctor, uh, you know, I'm a lawyer. And this is where you, you, you carry yourself a certain way based on that title. Right? Yeah. And this is all fucking layers. So, I mean, we're all, we're, we all have to fucking penetrate the layers. And it's threshold. So, like, you, you get to a new threshold and a new uh, layer of of reality and then it's it, another process of integration transmutation alchemizing all these aspects and layers and one of those layers is uh, identity identifying with your especially whenever you uh, have that ident identification with, with what you are. So I am this, I am that. Uh, whenever it's certain roles, uh, that's, that's very limiting. So you need to realize and release the things that are limiting you. Realize the barriers. This is the layers and the thresholds that we dissolve and dismantle. So yeah, that's that's going to be uh, really nice with the three things that I'm going to read from from the, one of the uh, greatest books that uh, has ever existed. And it's three images and it's Images that have to be transformed in order for uh, humanity to actually come up out of 
the position that it's finding itself in in order to transition into a clearer aspect, uh, a clearer representation of what is going on. These are three very simple things. Um, they have to do with humanity, and it's not. You, you, we, we can uh, dive into so many things past the three. We could, we could go. Uh, we could just keep going three, six, and nine into the things that have uh, redefined and, and morphed as crawled its way into the mind. Into uh, confusing. And just causing more illusion and separation. So so it's card time, <laughs> and so it is. The salamander, something I've vibed with for a long time. It's always been a part of my experience. Key words, contentment, basking in the good things of life, being renewed by warmth. Uh, Depending on where you're at, you know, right now we are experiencing uh, extreme uh, dips in, into the cold. And uh, this is going to be why it's very beautiful for you to engage deep level breath work so that you can uh, help your body adapt and utilize the polarities and the extremes. Because it, it, it's all fucking there for you to use. Okay, people? It's a choice here. So whenever we choose to utilize things to help strengthen us, then uh, this is part of the layer thing again. Uh, you do this for a while, and then your body... We, we recognize the signal that's happening within the body. Our, our body starts to become very joyful with these engagements, with the extremes, with the polarities. Wim Hof talks about this in uh, his uh, understanding of accessing the cold, accessing the breath, where the cold led him to, which was the breath. So... There are many of us out here who, whenever our bodies get extremely cold, like extreme, extremely cold, <laughs> um, the excitement, the the joy that happens, our bodies uh, respond in a certain manner. And it's a recognition of uh, the reasoning, the choice, why the choice is being made, what is happening with the understanding. The growth that is happening with this engagement and attuning to the body's response with that is just, just pure ecstasy. 
It's bliss. Whenever the body is growing and learning and adapting and we flow with this, it brings about a response that is ecstatic. And this can happen uh, during workouts, during ex any extreme state, during running, uh, engaging deep level breath work, deep level engagements with the cold, with heat even, with, with intense sweating and sauna. We, we tap into a recognition and the body responds in kind. And it's a very amazing thing to experience, to integrate. Since ancient times, the salamander has been associated with the element of fire. Pliny the Elder and Aristotle both wrote that the salamander was able to extinguish flames. However, during the Renaissance, this mysterious amphibian became associated with the occult science of alchemy. <laughs> Anything's only ever occulted whenever it's hidden, so this is another thing that has been uh, hidden from from people is the alchemical uh, realization of what you are, uh, of what is happening within and without. Some considered it a toxic animal to be avoided. Leonardo da Vinci thought that it possessed the magical ability to subsist on fire. Nowadays, the salamander is mainly known as a quiet creature. It is often found basking contently in sunny spots. As such, the appearance of the salamander is a reminder that life is intended to be enjoyed for what it is, rather than what it should be. This is true, but this is also, uh, you know, the allowing and then the choosing, you know, and finding the balance in that. Finding the flow, uh, choosing the allowance. And also recognizing whenever it's time to navigate in a certain manner, in a certain way. And you, you flow into that, you allow this to happen. And you recognize the signs and the signals and the pathways. When it's time, it's time and you feel it. And then it's left to choice. What do you choose to do with this feeling? How do you choose to engage it? So yeah, that's it for now. What do you choose to make real? What do you choose to allow to flow within you and have that reflected back to you? It's up to you. Choose wisely or don't. Even not choosing is a choice. Peace.